intervals. What are they and how can they enhance your lead guitar playing? Let's tackle them in this video. Coming up. <laughs> So one theme on my channel is that lead guitar consists of three elements, scales, intervals, and arpeggios. Now when I say three elements, I mean three elements on the fretboard. So if you memorize your scales, or really visualize them, guitar is a very visual instrument. You visualize the scales, your arpeggios, and your intervals, and you've got really everything when it comes to the fretboard elements of lead guitar. So I've done, I did a video called Scales for Starters that kind of really aimed more for people just starting off with lead guitar and how you can, uh, you know, like what scales to start learning to start playing lead guitar. I'll do more videos on scales. I recently did a video on arpeggios, which is very well received. I'll do more on the, that subject as well. Today we're going to get into intervals. There are really two ways you can play intervals. You can play them, the notes together, and you can play the notes separate. And when you play them together, you're starting to, I mean, you can do that in a lead guitar context. You can also do that in the rhythm context, as you can imagine, like with chord melody. I added the bass note just so you could hear it. I had to use two hands for that one. But you can see that, you know, intervals could be used for what we think of as rhythm guitar and they're really a foundation and a great tool to use to build your chords and in a future video i'm going to do a concept i call chord mining that'll just rock your world for learning for a new way to learn chords hint it uses we use intervals to do that so but today we're going to just tackle intervals from the ground up and primarily think of them in terms of lead guitar. So what is an interval? Well, an interval is the space between two notes. So the smallest interval in a guitar is a half step. I'm on a C and um, C to D flat would simply be a half step. Um, now, if I was to go to like D and I can play the the E flat or the D sharp note there on the same string. But you can also, I'm throwing it on, on the uh, adjacent string. So that's a hard way to play that interval. I wouldn't normally do that. But you can see that, you know, because the guitar has more than one place to play the same pitches that you have different approaches to intervals, whether they are on one string or on, you know, a string pair. But the smallest interval we just said is a half step, then you have two half steps, and would be a whole step. So all the scales are half and whole steps, and the diatonic scales are whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, meaning there's a whole, there's a whole, that's a half. It's the same as those two notes. That was an E to F. There's your whole, whole, 
and then it's a whole, and then you get another half, okay, to, to return yourself to uh, the octave. So that's how a lot of times music theory people will teach you to play scales is by teaching you intervals and then teaching you to build your diatonic scales, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Problem I have with that on the guitar is the guitar is a shape instrument. It's not like the piano. I, I learned to, to build scales that way on a piano and it's a very useful way to do it and it teaches you uh, that sharps and flats are going to come into the picture because you can see sharps and flats on a piano keyboard. But on a guitar, you don't have those visualizations. Obviously, if you learn the notes of the fretboard, which I do encourage, but for myself, I think that's less important than it is on other instruments. Um, I do know all the notes on the fretboard, but it took me a lot longer. I, for a long time, I was uh, playing at a more advanced level and didn't know all the notes, and you don't necessarily have to. And I know that's a controversial opinion, but the guitar is a shape instrument. and because it's a shape instrument, learning your intervals and then learning how to build scales from intervals is really kind of inefficient. It doesn't make any sense when you can just learn a scale shape. So we just played a diatonic scale, which I'm not gonna go into building scales because as I said, I got other videos on that. But you can see that a scale has whole and half steps in it. Now, if we played a pentatonic scale, it'd have a minor third. That's another interval, like the uh, A minor pentatonic. That first interval, that's a minor third. And there, the space uh, between the notes, you could um, you could say there's two frets in between. What I would say is call it four fret space because counting that fret as the starting point, one, two, three, four. And that's uh, those four frets are a minor third. Um, you can also play that same sequence because you're playing A to C, you could play it you know, you can play it on the fifth string instead. So there's there's two ways to get all these as we've been, we've been talking about, but that's a minor third. And then you have a major third, which I'm playing um, from A to C sharp. I think that would be consistent and play all these in the key of C. How's that? I don't want to confuse you anymore, but I got in a pentatonic and I got an A minor, that's why. So. Um, because that fifth position is such a popular shape, everybody knows, but we'll do that with everything in the key of C major. So there's my C, and we said half step, whole step, minor third, and major third, or... Now if we count it that way, I'm gonna make sure you can see, one, two, three, four, five, five it's a five fret span, that's a stretch. But I can hit it, and especially if my fingers aren't down like that. There's an arpeggio. Um, the first interval was a third, a major third. Okay, that's a C major arpeggio. So if we keep going, we can get fourths, which that's going to be a wide span there. So a way I remember a fourth is a fourth. You say four is next door. So if there's my one, one, two, three, four. Four is right next door, meaning it's the fret that's adjacent, but in a string. It's the same, I'm sorry, it's the adjacent string, same fret. And that's true for the whole guitar until you get to the B string. Then you have to add a fret. When you go from the third to the second string, that's a fourth instead of, that's not a fourth. So, um, that's a fourth. And there's an augmented fourth. There's a fifth. Fifths are, power chords, if you know a power chord. So um, I remember learning blues. You're playing fifths, okay? Now when I add that note, that's a sixth, by the way. So we're getting that in a second. Let me not get ahead. There's fifth. There's an augmented fifth. And there's a sixth. Now that six, I would, instead of doing the stretch, I'm skipping a string. I might have my... So yeah, there's a six, I'm skipping a string. So it's fifth string, fifth string and third string. <clears throat> um, a seventh, it's a 
dominant seventh, really, it's a flat seventh, dominant seventh. So that's a B flat and a key of C, we'd have a B natural normally. There's your major seven, it's a B. And then your octave, two Cs, eight notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If, for those intervals that aren't like named augmented um, or the dominant one, you can just go up the scale. So one, two, there's a the second, three, there's the third, four, there's the fourth. Okay, so the scale helps you it's just ones that between the cracks of the scale are named, like we said, you know, augmented fourth, augmented fifth, the dominant seven versus the uh, major seven. So what I just showed you logically and on paper and in theory, those are intervals. But you're not going to get a lot of music out of learning your intervals or playing your intervals like we just learned that. So... The mistake I made as a young budding guitarist was just taking my intervals no farther than that. And I need someone like on YouTube. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I need someone like on YouTube or in person, a, a guitar teacher to come alongside me and to have taught me what I'm getting ready to teach you. And that is the value of intervals is going to be when we take them and we play them in keys and we move up and down string pairs in keys. So let's hear that and what that looks, see what that looks like. So I'll start very, very simple. This doesn't, doesn't get really complex, but uh, at the simplest level, I'm gonna do an octave, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna play my octave. I'm skipping a string. That's fifth and third string. And I'm muting, my index has, it's, it's like instead of playing flat fingered, <laughs> I don't know how much you can see that on the camera, but I'm, I'm just going a little bit to the side instead of like, you know, and that going to the side allows the tip, the flesh of the finger to touch the string in between. And it, it's, a, it's a natural mute, okay? Allows this hand to just strum it. So, that fourth string is muted. So I don't know if you can see it better from the side here. So, because instead of doing it on your tip, just go to a little side. So, so that D coming through to the side. Okay? And I'm just gonna take this up to scale. That's all I'm gonna do. So, you should be able to do this on any string pair. So, like if you get to the third and second. I'm sorry, fourth and second strings, you have to add an extra fret. You can't do that. Because keep in mind, the guitar is tuned in fourths on all the string pairs, except from the G to the B string, it's tuned in third. That's why we, when we're playing on that, when we get that B string, you have to add an extra fret on this interval. You can hear how they, these should remind you of West Montgomery. So especially with that neck pickup on. Um, I, we also have to do that same wider shape from the third string to the first string. Okay. So those could be played like I'm playing them or I'm strumming them. You could hybrid pick. Um, that wasn't playing through a C major scale there. I was just playing third position. And my, it's a good exercise just to get comfortable. Right hand. It's pick on the lowest string and flesh of the finger on the higher string pair. So, but you can play these separate. So, so that's another way of doing it. Or where you try to use the pick or the hybrid approach. So those are octaves, not really that revolutionary, but if you've never, unless you're a beginner, never played them before. I mean, there's a lot of great music comes out of, you know, just playing an octave, okay? So um, let's move on to what I think the most valuable interval is going to be is thirds. So, and I'm playing a low third, so fifth string and fourth string. 
Now, look at my shapes, they're changing. Okay, what's going on here? Well, this is what I was telling you, I, I should have, I didn't really compute that I should be doing this with intervals, but you wanna play them within the key. So I'm playing in a key of C major and I'm moving thirds up and down. So to do that, I have a C and an E, and then I have a D to an F, E to a G, and what's happening is those intervals, this is a major third, but that's a minor third. Minor third, major, major, minor, minor, and major. That's how it works out in the key of C. If I played a major all the way through, I'd go to C, and then that D, that's an F sharp. There's no F sharp in the key of C. That's why I picked C major, by the way because I wanted you to uh, be able to identify those notes that are outside. I can't just take a major third all the way up because it's not, even if I match the uh, lowest note to the scale, the top note's not gonna be in the scale. So it's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, and that should conform to a pattern that I hope you know if you don't go watch my video series on the number system because what's happening is these thirds conform to the number system. This is, um, and I'm counting from the lowest note of my interval. If that's one, because that's a C and we're in a key of C, the first, inter the first third is a major third. One's major in the number system. There's a two, so my second third's minor, because two chord is minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, and the reason seven stays minor is because seven's normally diminished, and diminished is a minor chord with a flat five. So these thirds follow the number system, so if you know one, it'll be easier to process and think about the other. So thirds, um, you can do them high. Should sound familiar to you. Um, but um, yeah, you can play those in different ways, you know. So they're, they're natural harmonies for your lead parts. You can play the notes separate like you heard me doing a little bit. I'm mixing them in with scales. That's where they're more valuable, I think. I don't want to play thirds intervals all the time. <laughs> Hendrix using double stops. Those are intervals. You heard me, might have heard me do that one earlier. That's, um, it's a, half step, but I'm crossing, I'm playing a string pair I, to get a little bit of stretch. If I can add that C in there, that's a really cool chord. Uh, so, but there's a lot of use for these with lead. So those are thirds, and as I said, I think thirds are mo most valuable. So the other type of third you can work on is what's called an inverted third. So if C to E is a regular third, if you took the C, or C to E, take that C, and I'm gonna raise it an octave, which could be there, I'm gonna t take it and play it, the, it at that C. So um, I'm playing, um, I'm playing a, the fourth and second strings, okay? So that's what I'm getting out of it, all right? So that's, an inverted third, where I've taken the C that was here and I raised it an octave, all right? And if I was to count scale notes from E to C, E, F, G, A, B, C, that's six notes. So an inverted third is a sixth. So, and what those look like in a key of C, So, you know, you might recognize those in some blues and classic rock music. So, very useful. And I find these are very useful for chord melody playing. That's an important thing to, uh, to keep.
keep in mind. And I'm going to do a separate video on chord melody sometimes, so I don't want to go deep into that right now. But So those are sixes, and I think of them as another type of third, inverted thirds. So thirds are very valuable. So let's do fourths. If I was from C and count up to four, one, two, three, four. There's a four. I don't really play these a lot. Well, actually I do, <laughs> but I stack them. And that's something else you're gonna do. So I can do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is where I use them, I use them in jazz, okay? I usually stack them again. I usually play four pattern, four string patterns, so like that. Which is another video I'm going to do called Quartal Voicings. So stay tuned for that. But really, I, that's pretty much the meat and potatoes of chordal voicings right there. So fourths are cool, but don't use them a lot. Maybe I can find more ways to use them um, in lead guitar playing. It has a jazz sound when you hear me play them like that. And then fifths, we talked about those with power chords. One, two, three, four, five, right? These are very straightforward until you get to number, number seven. So I'm keeping track of the number. That's A, so that's a six. And I get the B, that's a seven. I gotta flat my third, I can't go straight. Okay? So I don't do a lot with fifths, but, uh, well, I stack them. That's what I'll do. So stacking, when I talk about stacking an interval, if one, two, three, four, five, and then from that, that end note, one, two, three, four, five. So one. You might recognize that from the police. Um, so I don't mean law enforcement, I mean the band. I hope you know that. Uh, he did that on um, you know some of their hits. So. Those stacked fifths also outline a chord. For that particular chord, it's a C major add nine. Just playing those bottom three notes of it. So, so you know, those are some ideas you can think of too, is stacking your intervals. Uh, we did sixes. Let's talk about sevenths. So I'm playing major seven, and I'm going to move these. Up, up the scale, right? So there's a minor seven, minor seven, because it's two and three, and four is major seven, and five is dominant seven. I, I don't know, I should refinger these so you can see them a little easier. See, I, that maybe that's an easier visual. I was doing that, and I can do that if my right hand is like hybrid picking. If I was gonna strum it, you're gonna hear that note in between, and that's where I might wanna do it this way, and then again, get the sloppy mute in there. So um, those can be, again, you know, all of these can be useful for rhythmic purposes and building chords, but they can also be useful for playing lead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the idea with intervals, is you really want to get good at playing them within the keys. Now, I can't do that as easily with, you know, I can't just say, okay, let's take augmented fifths and play them in C major, because there aren't any augmented fifths in the key of C major. However, there is one in the key of A melodic minor. Well, A melodic minor is not a key, but if the song was in A minor and the chords were derived from the melodic minor scale, you could throw it a C augmented third, uh, C, a C, yeah, augmented fifth. You could do, no, wait, wait. So you could throw that in, in there. And that would work if the song was a, you know. That would work. Just gotta know your scales, but generally, um, the ones, the intervals that you're going to be able to use in a key, in a standard major or minor key, are the ones you've just seen me go through. So I'd be interested in hearing your comments on how uh, your 
finding ways to use intervals, maybe in ways I hadn't thought of. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content that I am teaching. I've got more ideas to come and I always appreciate your support. Thank you for watching.